Hey guys, Henning E. Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to be talking about a really interesting subject, which is AI and CG art. We are currently at the very beginning of the AI revolution, and art is one of these areas which is you can actually start to use it for something because it's so visual. So you can directly see some results. So there have been a few AI powered tools and not AI in in a it's a marketing term, but actually <laughs> AI powered neural yeah. network tools on the markets. And I firmly believe that this is gonna change the industry in, in the coming years. A lot of a lot of tasks which are done by hand today, I'm fully convinced is gonna be replaced by AI in the coming years. So we have some tools here we're gonna be showing you, which are currently available. So the first one we want to show you is, this is an app which became very popular just in the last few weeks. This is called the Face app. And uh, we I had to record this from my Android phone. And <laughs> basically what it does, it recognizes faces and it just does insane stuff to it. One click and you make your character old and it actually looks really good. It can make you old and cool as well. I like when you stack them on top of each other, you make the old older. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, we do some crazy things with no, but it's a really impressive piece of software, and you know we've just been messing. I guess like the whole world has has just been messing around with it and making their I don't know moms younger and their grandparents younger and themselves older, and like seeing this kind of stuff, you know, like there's part of me that just goes, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> what's gonna happen to the world now? But at the same time, it's a really cool tool, especially artistically. Um, you can do some really interesting things with this. What this is kind of leading up towards is that artistic skills are going to be so much more important where it's not so much can you technically sculpt something like this or can you retopologize this woman. It's more about your artistic eye. Yeah. Can you actually can you actually art direct this? Because you really are going to we are really are going to be reaching a point very soon, at least in a few years when these tools here become actually practically useful, where it's it's going to be all about the art direction. It's not going to be about how good are you at grooming X gen or your the skills of a UV map, but it really is going to be about how good are you at designing. One really cool thing when it comes to the face app is that you can make so many revisions right away. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to like what hairstyle do you want, you don't have to screw around in Photoshop and paint something up or photo, photo bash it together. You can actually get really good hairstyles and it looks, it looks good. If you were to do this on a CG model, it looks a bit fake just because it, it just, it's a CG model. Yeah. It's a zebra screenshot. But if you were to do this on a person, sometimes you legit can't tell that the aging isn't real yeah. or that the hairstyle is fake. It's insanely impressive. You know, more and more of these tools are starting to pop up. Um, but it's not like these were just made, you know, the past couple of weeks in someone's basement. These are like years and years of development and it's starting to come out now. Yeah. And we're just going to see more and more of these tools pop up. And, you know, it's going to become more and more scary. And yes. <laughs> it, like Henning is mentioning, like a lot of these, a lot of these, like what you can use a lot of these things for is definitely going to re be replacing a lot of jobs for better or for worse um, but it's all it also means that a lot of jobs i think that maybe are very manual especially in cg that don't need to be manual um, can be automated so we can focus more on the artistic thing instead of just being pure like technical monkeys yeah the the doomsday profiteers here are saying that oh everyone's going to lose their jobs and it's going to be really bad but the optimism is saying uh, the optimist here is saying that yeah, they're going to be fewer jobs needed to do the project, which means smaller teams can do bigger jobs. Mm. You're already seeing this in the big studios that what would require like 200 people uh, 20 years ago can now be done by like a tenth of the group. Even with technology, which is not AI based, like zero meshing in ZBrush, auto UVs, again, not AI based, just just kind of clever algorithms. They're, they're already making certain jobs like one click solutions. So you don't have to do this kind of stuff by hand anymore. Imagine when you get actual, true, smart algorithms, which knows what you want. It's not wrapping a base mesh onto something else. It's, it's actually making topology where you need it, when you need it, in like a click of a button. I mean, we're probably going to get to a point where we have, like right now, you know, we have actors and we do scans of actors. Then we wrap a base mesh to the actor and then we have, boom, we have it. 
eventually we're going to get to a point where we just have a character creation kit where it's like but it's also going to be really good it's going to have such a wealth of like information from so many different actors and so many different faces that you can just you have a slider and you just go what do i want bigger nose smaller ears and it's probably going to look amazing yeah it, i am i'm very skeptical towards teaching people only technical skills because i've already seen this in the industry where like morton was mentioning before if you're doing a digit double today for if it's for games or for film you you most likely have a scan and then you have a base mesh and now you just wrap it to the other so if you know topology to a perfect level today cool nobody cares because it's already it's <laughs> not really a job you really need anymore apart from specialized situations unless you do like a a very creative character but for a humanoid or anything like that you, it's already pre-made in the big productions here is one which absolutely terrifies me as well this is deep fake. This is where That's some, some scary shit. Yeah, this is some scary shit. This is where some mad geniuses is using Jim Carrey on top of Jack Nicholson for The Shining. Now, if you were to look closely on this and you were to like step frame it, you can probably find some mistakes here and there. But this looks insane. This here is not somebody who's taking the photo on top and like warping it. This is actual AI deep fake technology. Yeah, this is gonna be. I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about this, except that I think it's pretty scary <laughs> because just the implications of what this kind of stuff can be used for in the future. But at the same time, uh, like we've talked about before, it's like, well, imagine the possibilities for films as well, like what you could do with this. You know, like if you have something, you've captured a session with an actor um, and oh, you have to reshoot something. Well, it turns out you don't need to get the actor in to do the scene. You just have their data and then you just do a you know a deep fake which is i guess not a fake at this point well maybe they have like some stand-in actor then they do a deep fake on top of there with their face and then all of a sudden you have a scene that's been shot but it's a lot cheaper yeah it's almost like you'll be paying for the ip of the actor yeah the right exactly. to use the actor and now you're gonna in this movie now tom tom cruise is actually gonna be in it and the other ones are just renting him so now you get this is the authentic tom cruise experience <laughs> and the other ones it just looks like him it's yeah. a, it's an actual fake like I, don't, I really don't think that is too far away from from being a reality like looking at some of these examples it is absolutely insane how real it looks there were it's, recently some yeah. guys who did a uh, it was keanu reeves stopping a bank robbery and <laughs> it's the voice acting is a bit off but yeah. like you legit can't tell that it's not him it was like the uh i can't remember they're like the vfx crew or corridor or something yeah those like are the guys who made it ah uh, yeah they also made a, a tom cruise one where like they hire some crazy person to do like a weird <laughs> impersonate like that was like the most off bit about it's like tom cruise but on coke or something <laughs> so tom cruise but i guess so that was like the point i suppose and he comes into the studio and it's like it's a pretty decent like deep fake um but you know and it's but it's crazy what we can already do with the to technology that's available so that's just gonna like in the next five to ten years you're not gonna be able to distinguish it then we have another another one here this isn't scary this is just cool technology blows my mind this blows my mind this is relighting by by one of the top universities in the US absolutely fascinating what you can do here this is this is not gonna this kind of tool is probably not gonna destroy democracy for us like <laughs> all the other ones are but uh, this is just uh, this is just really really interesting yeah I would love to know like what's behind it so like what's the technology like it was the SIGGRAPH paper mm. and right yeah it's so. paper. Um, uh, like I'd love to hear more about it just because like how do they treat it because obviously there's some sort of like 3D involved because they need to analyze the face in some way uh, but it's like it's really fascinating what they can do with I suppose one image I think it's demonic forces at work probably that's, that's probably like the only that. thing <laughs> um, but you could use this for maybe you're doing a piece or something you're I don't know like a personal piece and then you realize oh, I actually want to change the lighting you just mm. throw in an HDR R in the background and you just dynamically swap it in and out so you know maybe this is more like a proof of concept than anything that mckinney says will actually ruin our democracy like the <laughs> other two examples <laughs> yet but it, all in all i think this is really cool it's just a really cool thing yeah i think ai is gonna it's gonna be integrated into basically every single part of cg from concept painting we look at a very scary and freaky examples in a little <laughs> bit to uh like particularly modeling and asset work to texturing where you don't really when it comes to texturing now i haven't seen any actual papers in this yet but i think it's going to be what do you want and it's going to make it yeah it's just gonna 
it's gonna we, we currently have smart materials but they're not very smart materials they're just using clever musk i think yeah. we're gonna get truly smart materials we have ai materials yeah ai materials and substance painter but that was like the example that they showed off like nvidia showed off this example where they've made this weird ai software where you just basically fill in i want a mountain shape and i fill it in with mountain color which i i don't know in that case was, case was brown and then they just sources from like this ai library and, and makes mountains make a blue patch and it has water yeah that, that's what i mean where perspective becomes less important to mm. know and art direction becomes more important yeah speaking of nvidia they have some really cool tools as well this is uh, ai denoising in a tool called optics this is this is you know the more lower hanging fruit which is what can ai do right now and it can it can denoise really really fast where you know this again is not going to destroy democracy this is just going to speed up the work we currently have so this is kind of like first generation AI. This is commercially available in a bunch of different software and you can use this today. Yeah, and like really that's, nice. that's something that we use ourselves, not this tool specifically, but denoising for renders that we've done, yeah. where we just throw it into Nuke and then we denoise it in Nuke. Obviously that's, that wasn't AI based, that was just like, look at the pixels next to it. <laughs> I don't actually know what the difference between like an AI, AI denoiser and like another denoiser would be. Well, I'm that's easy. It's the AI. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing it's just more intelligent, <laughs> yeah. I suppose. But even that, even like the base non-intelligent AI denoiser actually does a really good it's job. still really good. So having something like this just means, I don't know, you can cut down the render time by half, 10 times. I don't know. It's probably going to start being really crazy because the better it gets, the more and more it gets better and better at guessing what do you want in the image. And then just it makes it up and then yeah it just happens to be exactly what you were looking for <laughs> yeah this is again an example of where the technical parts become less important and now instead of a render artist a lighting artist spending all their time debugging stuff in a render scene they're going to be able to spend their time on uh, on actually making this scene awesome they're going to have so many more iterations to fix something this is how it was like back when i started with cd like many years ago now you did a render and then you 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 did a lighting change then you did a render and now you waited for a long time then did a new change and now you waited for a long time yeah and today you're you're lighting as you're going along which means you don't even have revision it's not like you have iterations anymore it's just a continuous process yeah and um, i'm very excited about specifically these kind of denoisers as well then we have a tool which is absolutely freaky <laughs> this is called uh this is called gan breeder uh we tried to find another tool as well but that that was so popular that it completely broke the site <laughs> that was an ai portraits one but let's look at this one this is where you can choose uh some different categories and you can mix it so we can choose an animal and you're seeing there they look they look like normal animals in the beginning but once you start to look into it like this is a pretty fucked up bear because <laughs> this is not a actual bear anymore same with like the african elephant now I'm not an elephant expert, but, but I don't think this is exactly <laughs> what an elephant looks like. I like that it, you already pick from a gene pool, which has yeah. already been interpreted by an AI, and you just you just make it even worse. So but let's take this one. It can do crazy things. Like you can compare it to we were talking about this earlier. Like there's a Pokemon breeder, where there's an online Pokemon breeder where you could combine Pokemon. That's this, but on steroids. Yeah, exactly. So let's combine a cheeseburger or an Arctic Fox, and let's see what we're getting. Like the images we're creating now have never, <laughs> that's that's terrifying. These that's images have never been made before. God, like the, the middle one just looks like roadkill. <laughs> but the bottom one is actually kind of cute. Like the, that's actually pretty cute. It's pretty, pretty cute, it's a pretty cute hamburger dog. So the cool thing is that these images are, these are actually being being made right now oh um, god and uh, the middle one is again is so messed up this with a balloon yeah see that's that's when it turns weird yeah like this is <laughs> when it turns pretty creepy when <laughs> you're just getting these crazy variations uh obviously these tools here are they are incredibly like they're tests right now like these tools are not commercially available for anything you can't have this tool in photoshop and to create creepy hamburger dogs no. but what you can have is you can you can see this as a proof of concept for what's to come where some art director is just going to be sitting with a picture of a hamburger and a picture of a dog and now you're getting a thousand <laughs> versions of it yeah or maybe you actually have an interface in these tools as well instead of just clicking on hamburger dog number two uh, you can actually 
actually use them for proper interfaces. And it's going to start getting more and more real time. Like Henning said, we're going to have interfaces for it. So eventually you're just going to have like a concept art software where you just have a bunch of sliders and numbers you can put in. And then you say like, yeah, you just input some mountains. I want some castles in there. Uh, this is the kind of feeling I want. And it starts, it just starts to generate the images. That's a lobster castle. A lobster castle, I like it. And you're getting something which has never been done before. This is absolutely terrifying. What the f <laughs> 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 Looks like something out of Willy Wonka or something. Yeah. Then we have a software which is called, um, this is called Topaz Gigapixel. Gigapixel is a really interesting software. Currently, it has one feature, and that feature is to up press images. This is the CSI <laughs> Miami Enhance. <laughs> Sumify. Sumify it. <laughs> so this here is a commercial available software, and this is something I've been using sometimes to uh, to actually enhance the textures. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't actually enhance them like like you think it does. It it just makes stuff up. You can see here the differences. There isn't actually anything here, so there aren't any pixels to enhance but based on what it's seen before and based what it's looking at it's being like it's probably that mm. so this is a really cool tool you can use commercially right now if you want to if you have some low-res textures and you want to uh, and you want to really like pimp them up this is the, probably the least exciting tool because this is not going to destroy democracy this is just going to uprise some textures here and yeah, there. yeah but it's also insane like there is nothing here you see the individual pixels and and but here you actually have patterns going on so with all the tools we've been looking at now, it, it's not that AI is here and it's stealing your job right away. That's that's not the case. But well, that's definitely coming. That so. is definitely coming. <laughs> yeah. Like over the next five to 10 years, we are going to see commercial available tools yeah. for, first off, most likely the low hanging fruit, like you're seeing denoisters right now and like uprising images. Yeah. But then we're, they're gonna be handling more complex tasks like, um, like retopology, which is pretty easy for a human to do right now. It just takes time. Mm. And then it's just gonna get more and more advanced. And we're gonna have a point where you really have to either specialize in really technical things like writing software or really artistic things. And a lot of things in the middle, they all, they're just gonna be going away, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending <laughs> how you look at it. Yeah, true. So if you're specializing, for instance, in Roto and Prep right now, or like layout, you know, some of these more entry-level roles, you, it's a really good idea to, to, to find ways to make sure that you are AI-proof. I'm really not like gloom and doom about AI. I'm just looking, it's just another tool. But this tool here is just so revolutionary yeah. because I could just take my old man into the face app on my phone and I could actually do concept art from the phone. Which is pretty incredible, actually. It's pretty insane. Like, I'm scared of some of the things, but more like what's going to happen to society scared. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like for what all of these things that like if there's like bad stuff that happens, there's also going to be some really cool and amazing things that come out of it as well. So I'm just hoping the cool, incredible things are going to outshine the not so great things. Yeah, for every political hit job there is going to be <laughs> and that's going to probably happen pretty soon in defects. There's yeah. also going to be like a little like a group of teenagers are going to make some insane movies with deep fakes. Soon we're going to see like a whole Avengers made with deep fakes. <laughs> yeah, by one 14 year old guy <laughs> in his bedroom with an iPhone. Exactly. So, you know, I think, you know, not to, like, not that the future is like super doom and gloom. There's definitely <laughs> things to look out for when it comes to AI. And there's also definitely things you can do in order to like AI proof yourself and your future in terms of job opportunities. But for me, it's an exciting thing. It's just a little scary, but it's also very, very exciting. Yeah, when this, when we get more of these tools available, we are gonna be testing these heavily for flip models and mm -hmm. we're gonna keep you up to date with this. I'm incredibly excited to see what the future brings here. So you might be able to like follow our road to like madness from this, <laughs> where we just go like, okay, everything's on fire now. And but, yeah. yeah, in two years, we're not <laughs> actually sitting here. It's all just deep fakes. Deep fake voices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, we hope you enjoy this little preview of the scary dystopian future <laughs> of uprising images and <laughs> denoising renders. <laughs> so if you want to see more like this, uh, write a comment below, hit the notification bell to get notified and make sure to subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you here in the future. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.